every example of justice is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that is contrary to justice is something that Allah has forbidden us. And excellence. Right? Excellence in what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not condition it in any way. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah has decreed excellence in everything. The believer, anything that they do in life, they're meant to do it with excellence. This is why everything you see the Prophet ﷺ do, you cannot imagine a more beautiful way of doing it. As Imam Musiri said, فَلَا أَبَرَّ فِي قَوْلِ لَا مِنْهُ وَلَا نَعْمِ You will find no one more excellent in saying no or in saying yes. That even in his refusal, he was the most virtuous and most excellent of people. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us how to respond, told the Prophet ﷺ how to respond to, to the wrong of others. Respond with that which is best. And you'll find suddenly, unexpectedly, that the person who was your en enemy will become as though a dear friend. And you see this again and again in the Prophet's life وسلم, He was a attacked and abused, wronged and oppressed, yet he never responded except in the best of ways. He never responded except in the best of ways. And what happened? This divine promise was fulfilled, that th those people who were his enemies became as though they were his dear friends. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very interesting. He says, they're as though he becomes a dear friend. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, as though a dear friend here? Anyone? Why does it say we'll become a dear friend? Anyone? The backbenchers? Because if you respond nicely to people, what happens? Some people may give up on their enmity. Let's say, random brother A and I had a fight. Okay? Just imagine. You have to frown. You have to fight. Frown. You have to frown. <laughs> so he was he, he's upset with me. Okay? Now if I respond nicely to him, he may give up on his being upset. Right? He may give up on his enmity. But the brother behind him, he resents me. Right? He's resenting me. Like, who does he think he is? But I keep being nice to him. What will happen? He might not be able to let go of his resentment his dislike. But how will he treat me in public? I'm always nice to him. I always you know, take care of his needs. I always give him gifts. I'm always nice to him. He hates my guts. Okay? Random brother B, you could get up. Okay. He knows that he hates my guts. <laughs> okay, stay standing. Okay. So he hates my guts. But let's ask random brother B. You hate my guts, but if I continue to be nice to you, how are you going to act towards me? <clears throat> yeah, you'll become as though a dear friend. Right? You can't let go, some people can't let go of their enmity. But if you act nicely with them, what happens? They're forced to respond nicely to you. Whether they wanted to or not. Whether they realize what they're doing or not. That's how human beings are. Right? But most people whom the Prophet ﷺ addressed became believers. They let go of their enmity completely. Right? So when he entered, returned to Mecca, those people who had been fighting him for 20 years became believers as a result of acting on this divine counsel, which is what? Respond with that which is better. Right? Respond to the wrong of others with the good. Then you see, for example, the Prophet ﷺ in key occasions, for example, at Qutb, and that's not a random mountain, Right, that's actually Mount Uhud. At, at Uhud, we see an example of, the, of divine discipline of the Prophet وسلم, in a beautiful way. The Prophet وسلم, when the, the Muslims were in retreat, he was attacked. His front teeth got broken and he was wounded. Right? He was wounded. Blood flowed down his noble face. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he blood, wiped the blood away imagine how you would, what you would say at that moment to someone who was fighting you right and there's someone you you had done nothing but good towards right and i don't want to hear what you'd say because it's probably not fit to say in front of people who are fasting right but what did the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say he said how do a people dye the face of their prophet with blood and succeed when he is calling them to their Lord, right? How, he, he, what was his concern at that time? Not what are they doing to me, but how do a people who die the face of their prophet, because he was sent to them, how do they succeed if they die the face of their prophet with blood? When he is calling them to their Lord, what is he worried about? When they're attacking him and they're bloodying his face, his teeth are broken, yet he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their success. Right? He wants them to succeed. Right? But even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplines them. Disciplines the Prophet وسلم, telling them, it is not your concern. Right? That is not your concern. Laysa laka min al-amri shaykh. You have nothing of this affair. Why? Because your duty is to convey. Right? It's your duty to convey. So even though there, imagine the tremendousness of the response of a person, even when being attacked, is concerned about the one attacking. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplined him, even in that, that there's a yet higher state, which is, be concerned for them in by conveying the message, but don't concern yourself with the result. Because the result is not in your hand. That's the affair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplined the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not because he was unrefined and needed refinement. But rather, as the ulama had explained, like a, a precious stone, like a precious diamond. Right? That before being refined and polished, it's still a diamond. It's still more beautiful than anything else. But once refined, it's even higher and greater in its beauty and luminescence. And that's how the Prophet ﷺ was. And he was the first intended by every call to virtue in the Quran. Right? And this is why he and then it became his duty to convey those virtues to humanity. I was only sent to perfect noble character, said the Prophet. ﷺ. And the consequence of that disciplining was that verily you are indeed of tremendous character. Verily you are indeed of tremendous character. Now, the question of course that we need to ask ourselves is why was the character of the Prophet ﷺ tremendous? And this is something that we don't do. Right? This is something we don't do. We read about things in the Quran, but we don't reflect on them. Right? And I won't embarrass you, but for example, we, we read throughout the Quran about the muttaqeen, the people of taqwa. But how many of us have tried to find out who are the muttaqeen? Allah says, in Allah ma'as-sabi'een, verily Allah is with the, with the patient, with the steadfast. Have we